Picture two adult macaque monkeys sitting side by side. At a quick glance, they might look quite similar. They have the same intelligent eyes, the same expressive faces, the same dexterous hands. But what if I told you that beneath that familiar fur, their bodies are profoundly different, engineered by millions of years of evolution for two completely different lives? The anatomical secrets that separate male and female macaques are a dramatic story of conflict, parenting, and the very different challenges they are born to face. Before we explore these surprising biological blueprints, if you are as fascinated by the intricate details of the primate world as we are, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel, Monkey Low. And if you find this topic interesting, remember to like and share this video. It is the best way to support our channel. Now, let's uncover the hidden anatomical differences between the sexes. The first and most obvious difference you will notice is sheer size. This is not a small variation. In many macaque species, an adult male can be 50 to 100% heavier than an adult female. He is not just a little bigger, he can be double her size. This dramatic difference in size between the sexes is known in biology as sexual dimorphism. And in macaques, it is a clear and powerful signal that males and females live under very different pressures. So why the huge size difference? The answer is competition. Macaque society is often built around a strict social hierarchy. And for a male, his position in that hierarchy is everything. Males must constantly compete with other males for social status, and higher status means better access to food and, most importantly, more opportunities to mate. In this high-stakes world, size and strength are a massive advantage. Over countless generations, the bigger and stronger males have won more fights, fathered more offspring, and passed on their genes for large size. It is a classic evolutionary arms race, but it is not just about overall weight. It is about how that weight is distributed. A male macaque's body is a fighting machine. He has significantly more muscle mass, particularly in his shoulders, neck, and jaw. These are the muscles needed for explosive power during a physical confrontation. A female's body, on the other hand, is built for a different kind of strength. It is a strength built for endurance, for the marathon task of carrying a dependent infant for months, and for the agility needed to find food for two. Her build is leaner and more efficient. His is built for the brawl. But a male macaque's most formidable weapon is not his muscle. It is hidden inside his mouth. If you ever see a male macaque give a big yawn, he is not tired. He is sending a terrifying message. A male macaque's canine teeth are incredibly long, sharp and dagger-like, sometimes over an inch in length. They are significantly larger and more formidable than a female's. These teeth have very little to do with eating. Their primary purpose is as weapons for fighting other males and as a powerful tool of intimidation. The size of a male's canines is an honest signal of his fighting prowess and his social rank. A male with large, unbroken canines is a force to be reckoned with. A male with smaller or broken teeth is advertising his weakness. This single anatomical feature is a clear and constant broadcast of his power, a silent warning to any potential challengers. A female has no need for such weapons, as her role in the troop does not involve the same level of intense physical conflict. Now let's move from the obvious weapons to the more subtle signals written on their skin. What if a monkey's skin could broadcast its health and status for everyone to see? In some species, like the rhesus macaque it does. During the mating season, the skin on the faces and hindquarters of both males and females can turn a bright, vivid red. But there is a crucial difference. In males, the intensity of this redness is directly linked to his level of testosterone. A dominant, healthy male in his prime will have a fiery red face. A younger, lower-ranking, or unhealthy male will appear much paler. This is an advertisement that cannot be faked. The bright red color tells every other monkey in the troop that he is strong, powerful, and a desirable mate. It is a visual representation of his dominance. For the female, the red coloration of her hindquarters is a different signal. 
It is linked to her estrogen levels and ovulation cycle. Her skin is broadcasting her fertility, signaling to the males that she is ready to mate. Her color is an invitation. His color is a declaration of power. To find the next set of differences, we have to look even deeper beneath the muscle and skin to the skeleton itself. While their skeletons are broadly similar, they are optimized for very different jobs. The male skeleton is what we call more robust. The bones themselves are thicker and denser. The points where the muscles attach, like the crest on the top of the skull for the jaw muscles, are much larger and more pronounced. His entire frame is built to be tougher, to withstand the immense physical stress and impacts of a life of conflict. The female skeleton, on the other hand, has one critical modification that is essential for the future of the species. Her pelvis is structurally different from a male's. The opening of her pelvic girdle is significantly wider and more rounded. This is a crucial anatomical adaptation that allows her to give birth to infants with relatively large heads and brains. While the male skeleton is shaped by the pressures of fighting, the female skeleton is fundamentally shaped by the demands of motherhood. These different lifestyles also lead to different strategies for storing energy. Think about fat. For humans, it is often something we try to get rid of. For a macaque, it is a vital energy reserve, but males and females store and use it differently. A female's body is primed to store more fat than a male's. She needs these energy reserves to endure the enormous metabolic costs of pregnancy and nursing. Lactation, the process of producing milk, requires a huge number of calories. Her fat stores are her baby's life insurance policy. A prime adult male, however, is built to be a lean athlete. While he needs some fat reserves, too much body fat would be a disadvantage in a fight. It would slow him down and reduce his agility. His metabolism is geared more towards building and maintaining muscle mass for those short explosive bursts of power that are needed to defend his status or challenge a rival. Her body saves for the future. His body invests in the present. Of course, the most profound differences between the sexes are the ones we cannot see at all. They are the invisible drivers of all these physical changes. Their hormones. From a very young age, the surge of testosterone in a young male's body begins to shape his destiny. It fuels the growth of his larger muscles, his thicker bones, and his formidable canine teeth but it also wires his brain for certain behaviors. It increases his propensity for aggression, for risk-taking, and for competition. This is why the play of young male monkeys is often rougher, a form of play-fighting that is direct practice for the real battles to come. In the young female, hormones like estrogen and progesterone are shaping her body for motherhood and her brain for a different set of skills. These hormones drive her reproductive cycle but they also promote nurturing behaviors and the formation of strong social bonds. The play of young female monkeys often involves practicing maternal skills, like carrying small objects or other infants, and engaging in the intricate social dance of grooming. These hormonal differences set them on two distinct developmental paths from the very beginning. Ensuring their bodies and their behaviors are perfectly suited for the roles they will one day play in the troupe. Finally, let's consider the end of their lives. Do males and females live for the same amount of time in many macaque species? The answer is a clear no. Females consistently have a longer average lifespan than males. The life of a male macaque is a live fast die young strategy. The constant stress of competing for rank, the high risk of severe injury from fights, and the sheer energetic cost of being dominant all take a heavy toll on his body. A male has a relatively short window of time in his physical prime to achieve a high rank and pass on his genes. After that, his health often declines rapidly. A female plays a longer, steadier game. Her reproductive success is not about winning a single battle, but about successfully raising a handful of offspring to maturity over her entire lifetime. Her anatomy and her less confrontational social strategy are built for longevity. So when we look at two macaques, we are not just seeing a male and a female. We are seeing two masterpieces of evolution, two distinct and perfectly adapted solutions 
to the great biological challenge of survival and reproduction. From the size of his muscles and teeth to the shape of her pelvis, every anatomical difference tells a story. It is a story of a male built for a life of intense high-stakes competition and a female built for the profound and enduring challenge of creating and nurturing the next generation. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the fascinating anatomy of macaques, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe. It helps us continue to grow and bring more of these amazing primate stories to you. We also want to know what you are curious about. What aspect of a monkey's life would you like us to explore next? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one.